Hi, this is Ted at Valley of the Dolly. Today we're going to talk about where digital nomads are headed next. If you like and subscribe to this video, I want to show you a quick image of an Irish Water Spaniel. These are great dogs. I had one as a child. They don't shed. Um, they tend to go swimming every day if they can find a water source because they have web feet. That's why they're called a water spaniel. And I used to show it when I went to the county fair every summer and it always uh, scored very well. He was a very great dog, Tigger. So let's talk about Lisbon, Portugal first. Lisbon, Portugal did not score in the top 10. So let's just get that right out of the way. It scored number 12. Why did it score 12? Well, it came in at number 10 when you started talking about the quality of life. Quality of life, that covers things like travel and transit. It came in at number 23 out of 49 in that category. But number eight, when you start talking about the environment and the climate, it's very similar to California or Spain. It has this wonderful environment, and I think that's what really kind of attracts a lot of people to Lisbon. Uh, great for healthcare at 25. Well, it's kind of an average score, but I think it, personally, I think, Lisbon performs very well when you start talking about healthcare. 13th out of 49, when you talk about leisure options, uh, and number 10 for safety and security. Where it doesn't score well is when you start talking about working abroad. So we're talking about career prospects, we're talking about salary and job security, work and leisure, work culture, and satisfaction. So if you're working abroad, those scores tend to be low, so that comes in at 42 out of 49, which is really quite poor. Personal finance does very well, 12 out, of, 12 out of 49. Ease of settling in, people loved it, they found the locals to be friendly, and it scored super well when it talks about building a quick network of friends. Um, but by being a digital nomad, kind of just by that very description, you're probably going to be here for a short period of time, a year or two, before you move on. So those uh, attributes are super important. If you're coming, you're getting set up, you want to integrate really quickly. Number 10 on this list is in Oman. This is Muscat, Oman. And it received a really high rating from expats when you started talking about the expat essentials. So that's the ease of finding housing, etc. It also, uh, locals were friendly. It was easy to get settled in. The lows really were kind of the quality of life day to day. That only ranked 29 out of 49. So slightly below average, but it still managed to make it into the top 10. Now you're going to go all the way from Oman all the way over to the east and we're going to go to Bangkok, Thailand, which is number nine. Bangkok, of course, is a very large metropolitan area of what, I think 10 million people. Um, highs here were more around personal finance and your ability to, you know, to make enough money to make you feel comfortable, affordable housing and excellent health care. So kind of that really great balance of you can have great health care, you find it affordable, you feel like your personal finances go a long way. When you start talking about the lows, you're starting to talk about the quality of life index, which came in at number 39 and air quality, which came in at 48 out of 49, which is very low, and safety and security scored only 44 out of 49. So those are really kind of the lowest scores. So people are really having to say, am I willing to forego that feeling of safety and security and the quality of the air for the savings I'm making and the ease of getting situated there? Another great opportunity in the Far East, if you're looking in this area, is Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This came in at number eight. And people who live in Kuala Lumpur, expats and digital nomads, they really feel like they're well paid. They feel comfortable in that country. And again, they noticed, they noted things like personal finance, income, and expat essentials and getting set up like housing. All of those things were really strong points when you started, started talking about Kuala Lumpur. And people overall, 81% of the people who responded from this survey who were located there came in, 81% said that they were really happy with the quality of life day to day. This survey takes over 12,000 members and it surveys them about where they're living around the world and that's how they rank the top 49 locations. So we're just going through the top 10 here. 
The negatives when you start talking about Kuala Lumpur, they tended to be more around personal safety, where it only scored uh, 46 out of 49. Political instability was noted as 43 out of 49, so there is concerns about that, along with the quality of life, which is affected by those safety and those political concerns. So that's coming in at number 38 out of 49. Number seven brings you all the way over to Latin America, and that is Mexico City. Mexico City was considered to be a location that had really some of the best food options that came in at number one for food. Uh, the ease of getting settled in was very high. The cost of living was considered great. Personal finance, feeling at home, the ease of getting settled in, all of those things scored very high when you started talking about living in Mexico City. Things that did not score that well. And I personally loved Mexico City when I visited there. I thought it was a beautiful, fascinating city. But when you start talking about things like healthcare availability and getting care, those things scored very, very low on the survey. And for most people, a lot of times you're healthy, you don't really think anything about that. But when something comes up and you need that care, finding it is much more of an issue in Mexico City. And it really is something to consider because you don't know that you need it until you need it, if you know what I mean. Um, with Madrid, that came in at number six. So we're gonna go all the way from Mexico City, all the way back over to Europe to Madrid, Spain. And this is the first and not the only city in Spain to make the top 10 list. Again, with Spain, they thought that uh, points of a really high quality of life, uh, digital life also was considered very high. The personal finances, those scored very well. When you start talking about things that scored poorly with Madrid, uh, you're starting to talk about things that are really related to working from abroad and all of those things that, uh, you know, advancement, all those things that come from people who are trying to make advancements while working from abroad. And also the state of the local economy they consider to be an issue. That meaning if you're looking at working in the local economy, that tends to be much more challenging. But they also said, you know, Madrid is a city you might seriously consider learning Spanish if you don't already know it to make getting around mobility uh, much better there. But there's a huge expat community, a lot of digital nomads, a lot of ways of making yourself feel comfortable in the city. Number five goes all the way back to the Middle East, and this is Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. This was considered the city that had the best quality of life in the desert. So a lot of people felt that it's a very modern city, very hustle and bustle. It had an easy transition, very easy, smooth transition to moving over into that environment. Scored really high in work-related questions, and it had great medical services. The areas where people had issues with living in Abu Dhabi, they tended to be around the scoring of the finances and that it just kind of had an average score. And I think personally, part of that just has to do with the fact that Abu Dhabi is not really inexpensive, it's kind of expensive. And so if you're thinking you're going overseas as a digital nomad and you're gonna be able to save money by being there, I think that probably is not gonna happen. Another one that's in the UAE, and this is Rash Al Kamal. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this came in at number four. And here's another city where people had a really high job satisfaction rating, where it scored poorly, well, and it scored, again, also very high on any of the work-related issues. Where it scores poorly, this tends to be in things regarding the quality of life. So its overall quality of life score was only average at 25. That's almost in the middle of the 1 through 49 ranking. Had very limited recreational sports activities that you could partake, partake in. And they considered it to be, or respondents noted that they felt it was an unattractive natural environment and very few public transportation options. So those were kind of the concerns that people noted when they said that they were moving to this area of, of, of the UAE. But still, it comes in at number four. And then again, this is really because of the flexibility of the work-related points there. Now we're gonna get into the top three locations and all three of these locations are in Spain. 
Number three is Valencia. I love Valencia. I went there in April and I thought that's a really great time to be in Valencia because the summers can be incredibly hot and you'll see a lot of sail sheets that are placed in between the buildings to kind of bring some shade from that very hot, humid weather in the summer. It's considered to have a great cost of living, great health care, ranks at the top for health care, uh, and great for quality of life. When you start talking about some of the negatives, if you're going to be a digital nomad there, they tend to be more work-related scores. And Spain also has a great digital nomad visa that they've just introduced. And I talked about this in another video, but I can uh, highlight just a few things. You have to have a minimum income, but it does provide you with the option of very easily coming into Spain and getting yourself set up there. So again, number three on this list is uh, Valencia. And I think again, if you're looking at working for a company abroad or for yourself, and you're not dependent on the Spanish economy, I really do think Valencia can be a great um, option. The second one on this list is Alicante, Spain. And this was considered great for affordable living because I think it's probably not nearly as expensive as uh, Madrid or Valencia. And it was considered very welcoming and made people feel at home, had a great social life, um, probably a number of expats there and digital nomads to kind of make that happen. The low squares were again working from abroad. It doesn't promote creativity. This is a subcategory of work-related issues. And personal career opportunities, again, scored poorly. Those all scored 39 through 49 on the category list here. So quite poor on, on those few points. And number one on this list is Malaga, Spain. And Malaga was considered great because it had a really high number, number one for personal finance in the finance index. Uh, it has a great general cost of living. Uh, locals were considered to be very friendly. It had a, the best climate, very easy for people to adjust and feel at home there. Um, a wonderful place to pursue leisure activities. The negatives when it came into looking at living in Malaga really centered on um, the local job market. So it scored really quite high in almost every other aspect when you start talking about things like the local job market, that kind of thing, didn't score so high. So if you really aren't dependent on that local job market, this really could be and may be one of the really next super big uh, hotspots for digital nomads and expats to go to and that is Malaga, Spain. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you.